Please write this down in your notes. The media mandate of the kingdom. The media mandate of the kingdom. And let's begin focusing on a very simple topic, and that is understanding the power and purpose of the kingdom of the air. Understanding the power and purpose of the kingdom of the air. You will probably finally appreciate why media costs so much money and why we must get involved in it. When you leave here today, you will get a revelation of why Arnold Schwarzenegger can spend $120 million on a two-hour movie and make $200 million from it. Or you will finally understand why Madonna and Michael Jackson can command 240 to 250 million dollars a year in their royalties and in their concerts and take home pay in the hundreds of millions of dollars. You're going to probably understand today why the television is so dangerous and so powerful and why the radio is so effective. I want you to listen with an eye and an air of revelation. Now, I'm going to move very quickly because I want to get all of this in before we leave. So please, I want you to begin writing notes right away, all right? Uh, we're going to talk about the, the kingdom of the air as we deal with the kingdom series. And I wanted to shift just a little bit uh, to deal with media because we're going to get back to the kingdom characteristics uh, next week. Uh, or week after, Dr. Horner will be speaking for us next week, so week after that I'll be speaking. But I want you to, to listen carefully to what we're going to talk about about the media. Now, let's talk about the nature of the media. And please keep my focus up there, please. I'd appreciate it because I'm going to stay with the board. I want you to write as fast as you can. I, I can't tell you how important this session is for your children, for your grandchildren, and for you. First of all, there's some principles I want you to write down first. The first one is that there's nothing on earth as powerful as the human will. Nothing more powerful than that. Matter of fact, the human will is so powerful that God himself does not control it. I want you to remember that. There's one thing that God does not control on earth, and it's the human will. Why? Because the very nature of will implies self-control. God gave you the power of will. Number two, the will controls the destiny of man. Your will is the agency of God's kingdom administration. When God established his kingdom on earth, he wanted it to be administrated through your will. The problem is your will is yours. The most dangerous gift God ever gave man was a will. And the most precious gift God ever gave man was a will. It's dangerous and it's precious. It's precious because God gave you the same power that he possesses, the power of a will. But it's dangerous because you also have the ability to choose against God. And that's how dangerous a will is. God intended to use the will of man to fulfill his will on earth. So God wanted you to use your will for his will. The only problem is a will gives you the power to choose even against the will of the one who gave you the will. I want you to follow this thinking now. Number three, the seat of the will is the conscious and the subconscious mind. That's where the will lives. It lives in the heart your heart is your subconscious mind, and your subconscious mind is the seat of control for your life. Then you got two minds, in case you don't know. You got a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Sub means below. So you got a mind that is always conscious, but then you got a mind beneath that that is not always conscious, but it's deeper and more important than your conscious mind. And your conscious mind feeds your subconscious mind information. And the more your conscious mind hears something, it feeds it to the subconscious mind. That is why repetition is dangerous. Repetition constantly 
goes to your conscious mind. But the more your conscious mind hears something, it begins to deposit it, or can I use the technical term, it downloads it to your subconscious mind. Now, you are safe as long as something is in your conscious mind. You're still safe. Because you can forget what's in your conscious mind. But the key is to get it to your subconscious mind. Once it gets there, then you are in trouble. Why? Because the mind is the center of thought and it holds the key to life. Now, when I use the word mind, another statement to write down, as a man think it, so is he. We all know that. But please quote it properly. As a man think it where? In his heart. There are two thinkings. There's a think and there's a heart think. Now, the word heart here is a Hebrew word referring to the subconscious mind. That's the one below. Solomon says, you are whatever is in your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is your heart. Your subconscious mind is your heart. Your subconscious mind is your heart. Whoever controls your heart controls your life. Whoever can get enough information into your subconscious mind will control you. Because as a man think it in his heart, that's the man. So if you want to control the man, all you've got to do is control his heart. And how do you control his heart? First, you work on the conscious mind first, and you keep repeating, 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 and repeating until the conscious mind deposits it in the heart. And now you're in trouble. That is why some of you are having problems with battles of things you're trying to change and you can't change them. Old habits that you were keeping for the last 20 years and now you want to change and it's tough to change. Young people, that is why God tells you to stay away from evil things. If you keep watching pornography, you keep reading dirty books, you keep listening to, to bad stories or, or dirty jokes, and if you keep listening, now the first time you see it, it doesn't bother you. But if you keep seeing it, it becomes downloaded. Now, once something is downloaded on your hard drive, what happens? Even when you are not conscious of it, it is still running. And all you got to do is press the right button, and you see all the pictures in color. That's why the Bible says, take heed what you hear. Why? If you don't control what comes into your conscious mind, it will soon become a part of your subconscious mind, and it's in your heart. And the Bible says, out of the heart, what? The mouth really speaks. It's out of the heart comes what? The issues of life. And Jesus said, from whence comes murders and lust and adultery? He says, they are coming from the heart. Everybody say the mind. mind. Write this down, please. The mind is defined as the heart. It determines the future and destiny of a man. I guess what I'm saying today is, you are a some total of the choices you make every day and whatever you decide to hear and see and listen to constantly will become your future. You become what you're continually hearing. You become what you're continually seeing. That's as simple as life is. Some of you are still plagued with habits that you've been trying to break and I know I've been dealing with people in counseling and they say, I've been born again for 20 years and I'm still struggling. And the answer is, you've downloaded some stuff that is still there. Now, how do you clean a hard drive? That's the issue, you computer buffs. How do you clean a hard drive of stuff that's been downloaded? Boy, that's a tough thing to do. Sometimes you got to buy a whole new computer because you can't get it off. Hey, boys, they're born all over again. Or what you got to do is you've got to buy another program that literally cleans it out. That's what the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is God's software. Yes, yes. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. And the material is the word of God. And the software takes the material and you're supposed to constantly keep hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God until it drowns out what was there for 20 years. That's the only way to do it. Now, it's really a battle for the soul. Let's talk about the soul, the mind. Write this down quickly. The mind is the center of the soul. What is the soul? The soul is an integration of three parts. Please write this down. 
The soul is the integration of the mind, the will, and the emotions. In other words, those three things make up your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. What is your soul? Your mind, your will. Come on, everybody say, what is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. All of them make up your soul. So your feelings are in your soul. Your decision-making power is in your soul. And your mind, your thinking bank, is in your soul. That makes your soul the most important part of your life. Let me explain why. The battle in life is for the soul of man. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. Now, why did Jesus say that? You see, winning a body is no problem. Even winning a spirit is easy. You get born again in seconds. But winning your soul is a tough job. My job as a teacher and a communicator is to work on your soul. I am after your soul. I want to win your soul. I've already won your body because you're here. And I already won your spirit because you want to find God. But winning your soul is a tougher job. Because winning your soul takes a longer time than winning your body and your spirit. You are born again in a second, but trying to get you converted is a tough job. So the battle is for what? Your soul. The soul of the people, the soul of the nation, the soul of your children, the soul of your spouse, the soul of your entire job. Your soul is in trouble. The attack is against your soul. I want you to get this message. Write this down. The soul is the first component of media created by God. Why is the soul the first component of media? Now, this is new stuff for you, so you've got to think about this. The soul is a media because the soul is the mediator between the spirit and the body. The soul is the most dangerous part of your life. Matter of fact, your spirit is not your problem because you are a spirit. But your soul is your problem because your soul is the one that dictates what your spirit receives. Don't miss this. I know the devil is in the Bahamas today. Because if I was him, I'd come to this meeting myself and sit up front. Right here. You sit right there and listen to me teach. Because the devil knows that I got the key to his battle. The devil ain't after your body. Your body's just a bunch of dirt, a lump of dirt. He ain't after your spirit because your spirit's already filled with someone. But there's a, a, a key component that he can still manipulate. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. And the soul is the medium between the spirit and the body. Now, write this down. The soul receives from the senses and deposits in the spirit. Very important. What does the soul do? It receives from the senses. In other words, hearing, tasting, seeing, touching, and feeling all come to the senses, but they all go to the soul. They go to your mind, your will, and your emotions. So whatever you see, touch, taste, feel, or hear goes to your soul. Now, if your soul takes it and deposits it into you, which is your spirit, then you've got to make sure to regulate what the soul is picking up from the senses. That's why Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Take heed means be selective. Regulate your hearing. Uh, choose what you want to listen to. Why? He said, because it will, it will leaven the whole lump. My God. It will mess up your whole life. Your soul receives from the senses and deposits in your spirit. But here's the other side. It's a little bit difficult now. The spirit reveals through the soul to the body. Now, here's the problem. I need some help. Can you help me? Come here, son. Can you help me? I want you to stand up here. I got to do this visually so everybody can see this. Can you stand right there for me, please? I need someone else too, please. Can you come? I need a woman, a female, okay? Can you just uh, turn facing that way, please? Okay, can you stand right in front of him here and face that way for me? Thank you, son. I need a lady now. 
Come, please help me. Thank you, Sylvia. Oh, thank you, Miss Media. Come, come. Hey, that's a good one. Let, let her come. Yeah, since she's media, she could do this real good. I want you to stand right here. Watch where I'm going to put her. In the middle. Okay? Stand right in the middle of them. Face that way. Now, this is the battle that you're facing right now, every day, every moment of the day. This is your spirit. This is your body. This is your soul. Now, your body is getting information from what it sees, what it hears, what it tastes, what it touches, what it feels. And it takes it and transmits it to the soul. The soul then takes it and gives it to your spirit. All right? And when the spirit gets that information from the soul that it got from the body, the spirit now has to deal with this information. Problem. Once the spirit get all this information inside of it, when the spirit wants the body to do something, who does the spirit talk to? The soul. So the spirit gives the, the directs to the soul and tells the body what to do. Now you got a couple of problems here. Sometimes the body don't want to do what the spirit wants it to do, so the soul is in a battle. Is what you call a mental battle, a battle of the soul. So your spirit says, the information that I got from the body is unrighteous. And the soul says, but that's all the body gave me. The soul cannot give the body, or the spirit rather, what the body didn't receive. Faith comes by what? hearing and you hear through what the body so the body hears something the soul takes it believes it and gives it to the spirit now the spirit receives and conceives it if your spirit has the spirit of God in it it's not a spirit that's missing there it's on the inside of the spirit that spirit disagrees with what the spirit just received and the spirit of God says now that is not righteous information so the spirit of the man tells the soul of the man that is not Righteous. Tell the body that is not righteous. Tell the body to change source of information. Body says, no, I like how it feels. Soul, come on, feel it. And so the soul feel it from the body. And the soul says, it does feel okay. And the spirit says, but it ain't right. So the spirit says, soul, tell the body, stop it. Body says, feels sensually good don't you like it soul and soul said mm -hmm. I know it's wrong but it feels emotionally good and so the spirit loses and now the spirit is downloading junk that's starving it to death You know who's the most important part of that whole trinity? It's that soul, fella. That soul. Because that soul could decide to reject or accept the power of the soul. So the soul takes from the body, gives to the spirit, but the spirit also takes from the spirit and gives to the soul for the body. So the body can only do what the soul makes it do, and the soul can only do what it accepts from the spirit. That's why the Bible says, do not walk in the flesh, but walk in what? The spirit, and you not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you very much, oh man. All of that is man. Thank you very much. By the way, you know, there's a female in the middle there. She got the feeling part. Praise God. Write this down. The soul feeds the spirit and receives from the spirit. This is a mystery. The soul feeds the spirit, but it also feeds the body through the spirit.
through the soul rather and it's very important that that you be careful what you listen and hear and see and allow to come into your taste buds that's what drugs are about drugs are about tasting and feeling and and sensing something that your soul begins to emotionally enjoy and the spirit rejects but if you do it enough times it downloaded it, and now when you want to quit doing drugs your problem is it's stuck in your hard drive so you get saved and saved and saved but you never get your hard drive clean The only way to be completely free from any kind of habit is to have a replacement of habits. You got to download new information. Write this down, please. What's the purpose of God in all of this? Number one, man is a spirit. He lives in a body. He possesses a soul. That's what man is. Man is a spirit. He lives in a body. He possesses a soul. Say it with me. Man lives in... Man is a spirit, he lives in a body, but he possesses a soul. That's the unity, triunity of man. Whoever controls the soul rules the man. That's it, that's the point. The original purpose of God, therefore, was to rule the seen world from the unseen world through the unseen man living in the seen body on the scene. Get it? In other words, God wanted to control the world through you, but he wanted to do it from the unseen world, and he wanted to do it through your unseen spirit living in your seen physical body and he wanted to do that on the seen earth so that his will which is invisible could be seen visibly through your actions and through your execution so God wanted to rule the world through you but all coming to the world by, your, by and through your spirit the soul is God's media for kingdom rulership it's very important to understand this God wants to rule the world through your soul that's why the Bible says <laughs> I wish above all things that you prosper. Notice the focus. Even as your soul prospers. God places the number one prosperity focus on your soul. If you're not prospering in your soul, God says, you are poor in every other area. So if you're not getting the right information, you are actually destroying your life. Very important. Write this down, please. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of the, of the soul, the kingdom of the heart. If the kingdom doesn't get in your soul, the kingdom can't get to the earth. If the kingdom of God cannot get in your soul, it cannot get to the earth. If it cannot get into your heart, the earth will never see the rulership of God. Rulership begins in the heart. That's where it is. And until it gets there, there will be no kingdom manifestation on the earth. The first word of Jesus in his public ministry Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 it says and Jesus began to preach repent the word repent means what to change your mind where's your mind in your soul his first attention was given to the soul if I can get your soul changed he says then the kingdom can come from heaven on earth now there's a point I want you to write down here very important point and that is the kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of the of the soul also God is battling for your soul. So is Satan. That's my point for the whole day. Satan and God really are not after your body, even though that's important for the earth. They're really after your soul. God is and Satan is. Because whoever controls your soul controls you. I think we become so spooky we forgot where the battle is we become so spiritually spooky that we have actually invented demons that don't exist and we're fighting things that aren't there and the real battle we're missing Oh, I was studying the life of Jesus last night, just going through some of the thoughts that he expressed. And it's incredible. I wish I could just teach this for another two hours, but you couldn't take it. But Jesus' mind, he was always going after the mind. 
always, he said, if you hear my teaching, listen to my teaching, if you follow my words, listen to my words, he said, my words are spirit and they give you life. He's trying to get it through your soul. If I can get your mind changed, he says, you'll be sanctified. It's a battle for the mind. So we got two kingdoms and both are after your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions. What is your soul? Your mind, your will. That is why most of you are losing your battles. Think about it. Let's deal with one of them just for a second. Emotions. What do you think is making you keep going back to that situation that you know is wrong? It's your emotions. Satan got you, man. One phone call and your knees get weak. Emotions. You're going back to that ungodly relationship. The battle is over the minute you feel your knees getting weak and you start leaving the house. And you drive in there and know the Holy Ghost screaming at you saying, stop, turn around, don't go back there. He don't love you, she don't love you, stop it. They're going to break up your marriage, stop, stop. And you're still driving. It's a battle. And the battle doesn't stop because you're preaching dongs. You got to grab your body. Come on, somebody. He said, I got to beat my body under. Your body got to come here, body. You going back to prayer meeting or back home to eat. It's your emotions. Write this down, please. Let's talk about what, what is the media. Now, we say the soul is God's media. Let's talk about media. The word media, uh, the word media is from the word medium. Write this down, please, because it's very important for every young person and old person to read. Very important to remember this tape. Get this CD, please, I beg you. What I'm teaching today is the key to 2005, 6, 7, 8, 10, 20. Because there is an attack on your soul like you never believe. You got 125 channels in your house with a remote control. And every button is after your soul. So you better understand what they're doing. Every radio station station and every number on the station is after your soul. This ain't entertainment. This is containment. They want to contain you. They want to control you. And that's what it's all about. It's about the media. And the word media is from the word medium. It means to stand between. In other words, the media is the thing between the source and the object. We showed you an example just now. We saw the spirit of man and the body of man. Well, the media is the one in the middle. That's the one that decides which receives what. That's what medium is. The word media means to mediate. Jesus Christ is called the mediator between God and man. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. Oh, I won't stop there for a couple of days and just preach. The Bible says there's only one medium between God and man. Only one. And who is that? The man Christ Jesus. That means if you get information from anybody else, Lord have mercy, to save your soul, you ain't got the right message. Hello? Christ is not one of the prophets between God and man. It says there's only one mediator. I respect Buddha. I appreciate Muhammad. I thank God for Haile Selassie. I thank God for Baha'i Lula La La. All these guys are great. But the Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man, and it's the man Christ Jesus. That means anybody else will give you distorted communication. Oh, I'm going to show you something. You're going to believe this. Write this down, please. Media means to interpret. When I travel to foreign countries and I speak to thousands of people in these big meetings, I speak English, they speak Portuguese. I speak English, they speak Russian. I speak English, they speak French. I speak English, they speak Spanish. And I'm standing there and they put between me and the people this guy. Now, I got to hope that this guy... <laughs> come on. ...is telling them what I say. Not only that, I got to hope he understanding himself what I'm saying. Boy, interpret, that's what media is. 
That means the chances of you getting the wrong message is so high when the mediator is in question. Okay. Between me and 10,000 people sitting there is the media mediator, the interpreter. Who's the most important in that whole scenario? Who? That fellow in the middle. Can you imagine? As important as I am, he's more important than me. And as important as those 10,000 people are, he's more important than they are. Why? He determines what they hear. Come on, talk to me. When you turn that radio on, that TV on, that CD on, that CD player on, when you, turn, you are taking a chance. When you open a book that you just bought, you're taking a chance. You got to pray. Glory, hallelujah. And that's why we've been so messed up in reading the Bible. Because we are the mediator between us and our understanding. And we got to depend on our concepts and hope they're right. Very important. Now, write this down. The media controls the message and therefore the quality and the meaning and the essence of the communication. The media controls the message. Now, the source does not control the message. The source knows what he wants to say, but the source got to totally depend on the media to get it right. And if the media gets it wrong, then the people, the object of that message, will get it wrong. Oh, hallelujah. That is why we cannot just allow anyone to preach to the world. And they're preaching to the world. Every channel you turn to. This young man that is so famous right now is a white boy with blonde hair. What's his name? Eminem. He got my name. This young man, Eminem, is a dangerous young man. He's a worship leader. I saw him leading worship the other night with over 70,000 screaming young kids. He was leading worship. I'm not sure which God they were worshiping, but they had their hands raised, and they was going just like you was going to church, and they were swaying with him. 70,000, man, getting it on. And everything he said to them to do, they did. And he was cursing. Sounds like 50 cents. These are mediums. So who do we do? What do we do? Do we allow Levard and, and these and Corey them to sing or let Eminem sing? See, you gotta decide who's gonna sing. So, they, so Corey sang it this morning. Some of you still ain't figuring out what he's talking about. But he's he dealing with a medium that ain't for you. Your head too old for that. But you got a 70% of our nation that understands what he's talking about. 70%. Amen. So what are we going to do? We got to make sure he get the right message. And I heard my sermons this morning in that song. Amen. Amen. And that's what we need. Don't criticize the medium. Check the message it's given. Write this down, please. Media can corrupt, clarify, pervert, or protect the integrity of a message. It can do all those things. It can corrupt it. It can pervert it, or it can clarify it. It can protect it or destroy it. The medium is the most powerful thing in communication. Write this down. The media controls what the receiver hears, thinks, and understands. Very important. The media controls that. And so we need to make sure that the medium that we are using is communicating the right message to the hearers because the hearers will get whatever the media gives them. We saw a demonstration here this morning. I hope you're not offended by what, those, what they showed in the media presentation. But that's happening every day on your television. You ever heard this, this TV show called My Two Dads? Or you ever heard about Will and Grace? 
I mean, Will ain't got no grace. You know that th these people need grace. But these are serious things. And they are communicating things. I mean, two men kissing on your TV and your son watching it, your daughter watching it. Two women kissing and they're watching it. And you sitting there, you don't even know what's going on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You better check the medium in your house. Why? It's controlling what your children think. How do you fight that? What you do is you come on right after Will and Grace and says, Hello, this is Dr. Miles Monroe. We're here to correct and clarify what they just perverted. Come on, clap loud for me. Praise God. In other words, you don't back out of it. You get in the middle of it. You got to fix it. You got to correct it. You got to clarify it. Why? Bible says be in the world. Get in there. Don't be a part of it, but be in there. You got to get in there. And boy, that's why they got the price so high, because they don't want you in there. They lock you out by finances. That's why the church remains poor. The devil ain't worrying, but the church just keep them poor. Why? They can't compete with the media of the mind. Write this down, please. God considered mediation as a dangerous power, and he warned us against the use and abuse of it. You no, know, when I read the scriptures, I was shocked. God is very sensitive about mediums. Why? The thing in the middle is dangerous. So God has a very strong sensitivity to mediums, to media. Let me read a couple of scriptures for you, all right? And you're by the tape because you're taking too long to write. Praise the Lord. The Bible comments on the power of the media. Now write these scriptures down. Very important. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27. It says, a man or woman who is a medium or a spiritist among you must be put what? To death. Because look, if they are mediating and they represent me, you kill them. Now that is a tough law. <laughs> God said, look, if they prophesy and I didn't talk to them, kill them. Do you know what they did to prophets who didn't prophesy correctly? They stoned them to death. In other words, God said, look, if... <laughs> well, I can't get, this is deep. God said, kill the media that's not presenting me. Kill them. Don't put them away. Destroy them. That's how dangerous the media is to God. It's a death sentence. Oh, the second one is dangerous. Watch this one. This one is serious. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10. It says, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices deviation or sorcery, interprets, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or cast spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. God says, May they not be among you. By the way, check that list so good because you, you may know somebody who qualified to be out of the church. Reading cards. That's omen. Tarot cards. Go to Miami to get your palm read. God says, now let me tell you something. You are an abomination. You trying to get information from me through somebody I didn't set up. I have said to the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, I set up no mother divine and papa boo-boo. I, I, I know who I set. Come on, y'all talk to me. God says, no, no, don't no, get, get me mixed up. They're not between me and you. Matter of fact, that's why God hates for you to read astrology, because you're putting the stars between God and yourself. And God ain't send no star. To talk to you. Yeah. yeah, but you know, the papers be on my desk. And they just give you the paper, just, just glance at it to check. God says you shouldn't be among it. Write this one down, 1 Samuel 28. Watch the results of wrong media. Saul then said to his attendants, find me a woman who is in the media. <laughs> find me someone who's in the middle. I need a media. Show me a medium so I may go and inquire of her. Since God ain't talking to me directly, let me go hire a witch, he says. Well. 
Oh, that sounds like some of these Bahamians and Caribbean people now. You know, they hear from God no more, so they're gone. Paying a couple of dollars and get little things done. God says, uh-uh. Now, let's see what happens when Saul did this, all right? Watch what happens when Saul did this. It says here, now, he misused and abused the kingdom of God. Here's what it says in 1 Chronicles 10, 13, what happened to Saul. It says, and Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance. What? Saul died because God killed him. This man made a mistake. But God wasn't mad at him, but he consulted the wrong media to get information. What are you doing at 2 o'clock in the morning on your internet? What are you consulting? Where do you surf, young people, to get your information about life? God said, he died because he chose the wrong media to listen to. What books do you buy? What stations do you keep your radio tuned to in your car, young men and women, older men and women? What is constantly, constantly being said to your conscious mind and downloaded eventually in your heart? It's the power of the media. The devil is after your soul. And Saul lost his because he went after the wrong media. He says, so the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to who? David. Over to who? David. Now, I want you to follow David's life versus Saul's life. David had serious media, eh? The largest song book in the Bible was written by this man. It's called the Book of Songs. And if you read and listen to his hits, <laughs> the Lord is my strength and song. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, Dave had the media in the bush, dancing in the mountains. In other words, if you can't find good media, write your own. Got it, young people? That's why I'm so proud of our young people. And listen, we just getting warmed up. I'm about to kickstart this ministry with new structure. By November, we're going to be on a glide ride. And I'm telling you, we're going to have some stuff happening here that's going to blow you away. I'm just in the, in the preparation stage here. But we're going to have to grab the media in every area to control what goes into the minds of our nation. You can't just sit back and get mad. You got to participate and be glad. You can't leave it. Let's talk about the first use of the media. Before anything existed, what did God use for the media? This is interesting. The first media was simply the word. Everybody say word. Boy, words are important. The word is the medium used by God to communicate his will, his desire, his thoughts, and that resulted in what? The creation of the world. In other words, God had an idea in his mind. He used the media of the word to get it out, and the word produced creation. In other words, the mediation between God and creation is the word. So the first one to introduce media is God himself, and the word was his first media. And today, it is still the most powerful media. What you hear will either kill you or save you. Write this down, please. Genesis 1 says, and God said, verse 3, verse 6, and God said, verse 9, and God said, verse 11, and God said, verse 14, and God said, verse 20, and God said, verse 24, and God said, verse 26, and God said. God did everything by using this medium of the word. John chapter 1, verse, verse 1 to 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. Important thing here is to notice that the Word is God. Do you see that? Okay, let me explain why. This word, Word, is important. 
uh, is the word logos, L-O-G-O-S. Write it down. The word there for the word is the word logos. The Hebrew word and the Greek word here that is translated in the Hebrew and the Greek for logos, it actually means this. It means expression of a thought. Write it down, please. Logos means what? Expression of a thought. Come on, I want you to be smart now, young people. Get this and understand it. The word logos means what? Expression of a thought. So if you were to read that verse and use the literal meaning, it'll sound like this. In the beginning was the expression of God's thoughts. And God's thoughts was God. And God was his thoughts. All things were made by the thoughts of God that were expressed. Verse 14, and the thoughts of God became flesh and dwelt among us in a body. <laughs> so, why is that important? Let's understand. Words are thoughts, containers. When you speak a word, it takes your thoughts away from your mind and it gives you a vehicle to use to transmit your thoughts and therefore it's the most powerful media on earth. When I give you a word, you just got one of my thoughts. Thoughts are invisible, but when you speak, they become audible. And therefore, I cannot know what you're thinking until you talk. What is a thought? A thought is a silent word. What is a word? An expressed thought. What is a thought? Your thought is your idea, your concept. What is your word? Your expressed concept. So when you speak to me, you are giving me what's in your heart. Write this down. Words control thoughts and create life. So you got to be careful who you listen to because they are giving you their mind. Now there's a statement we make in the Bahamas that's very serious but we don't think it is. And that is, we use this term, I'm going to give you peace of my mind. That is literally true. When people talk to you, <laughs> they are giving you a peace of their minds. And if you listen to them and receive it, you've just added their mind to yours. Take heed what you hear. The media, therefore, is the most powerful force on earth because it transmits ideas. Let's talk about words for a minute. Hebrews 1 verse 3 says, The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. He sustains all things by what? His powerful word. Not only did the word create everything, but it holds everything together. John 1, 3, through him all things were made, and without him was nothing made that is made. The word produced everything. God sent the medium of the word to save the world. Isn't that amazing? He sent the medium to save the world. This is interesting. We got the world going to hell, we got God in heaven, and God wants to save him. What does he do? He said someone in the middle. Come on, y'all talk to me. So who's the most important part of salvation? The medium, which is Christ. God loves us. We disappointed him. How does he communicate his love? He sends a medium. For God so loved the world that he gave his medium. Jesus Christ is God's media. And he brings what? Listen to Jesus now. Oh, listen to me, folks. Last night I almost exploded. Jesus said this. He said, look, I'm just the media. He says, now look, I only say what I hear my father say. Do you get it? You get it? No, I don't think you get it. He says, look, I can say what I want to say, you know. When you turn that radio on, TV on, CD on, tape player on, or even company on, you got to make sure they are only saying what the Father says. If they are saying something different, you are getting corrupt media. Do you understand how serious this is? Now I understand why Jesus kept on saying, I only speak what I hear my father say. I only say what my father told me. He who hears me, hears my father. Why? I have my own will. I could tell you all some things I feel like telling you all. But I only speak what I hear the source to say. So that when you listen to me, you hear the father's voice. We need media that does that in Jesus' mighty name. In the Bahamas.
When you write a song, check, make sure it's lined up with the word or keep your song in the shower. I don't care how good it sounds. If it ain't what the Father is saying, it's a corrupt song. When you're going to dance, you check your movement to make sure that the movement communicates the glory and the nature of God. So you got to check it with the word. It's very critical. Write this down, please. Words determine what the mind and soul receives and therefore determines your destiny. The words are the most important part of your life. Whether they are written, spoken, or read, or heard, or seen, those words are after your soul. They're after your soul. And this is why we must constantly monitor our media. Monitor our media. I saw in the papers recently, uh, you know, when that rapper was coming here to sing and everybody was concerned, I saw someone wrote an editorial. They said, we got to be careful of censorship. 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 And I'm thinking, okay, all right, censorship. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me how dumb we are. You realize that we would censor marijuana we would censor cocaine. And all they do is impact the body. We made them illegal. And all they do is destroy the body. That's why your brain goes back, because your, your physical cells get damaged. It's not your mind. It's what it does to the cells that activate the mind. But we make that illegal. But we have no laws that we are looking at profanity. We say we do, but then we let the fella in and tell him don't curse while he's singing. I don't understand that at all. So if we can talk about censorship. Let's deal with the real damage. If I hurt you mentally, if I damage you mentally, I got you. I mean, Bob Marley was here once, just once. Bam, finish. They came up from under the rocks now. And we still reeling under that? You just can't say censorship, censorship. Listen, you got to decide what you want to come into the minds of your nation. The government's job is to preserve the nation. And they should never feel in any way afraid to say, look, this ain't good for our national psyche. Yes, I would rather be known in the world as the nation who refused something that is profane. I let them call me discriminatory. That's why they ain't got no nation now. They never discriminated. We're going to discriminate what goes into our souls. I wish above all things that you prosper in tourism, but only as your soul prospers. We got to decide what we want to hear, what we want to see. It's amazing that some of the parents don't know what their kids are watching in the room on the internet. Because they don't understand the internet. Some of you older parents say, child, he ain't there doing any homework. Homework? Yeah, he doing home at work. You better find out about the internet. Find out how it works and put locks on your, your internet surfing so you can know how to monitor what your children hear and see. And some of you old younger people, you have the word of God in your heart. You're supposed to know what to do and what not to do now. Write this down, please. Very important. The key to media is the use of waves. Oh boy, we're getting into deep stuff now. Winding down. Watch this. Everybody say waves. waves. Say it loud. Waves. One more time. Waves. Everybody say it. Waves. I can't hear you. Waves. A little louder. Waves. Shake the roof. Waves. Now we're here. This is the most important part to write down. The key to media is the use of waves. 
The airwaves or the air is the source of all waves. The air. There are five types of waves. Write them down. One, you got airwaves. You got radio waves. You got televisual waves. You got brain waves. And you got gamma rays. Gamma rays are waves that the sun uses. The electrons in the air. Now, I want you to understand this. Waves are the key to influence. Whoever controls the waves control the nation. Whoever controls the waves control the nation. Those of you who know anything about history and coups, whenever a coup takes place in the world, in any country, when a group takes over a government, the first thing they want to control is what? The Broadcasting Corporation and the radio. Why? Because they know whoever controls the waves control the nation. Don't take that lightly. How? Tell me how could there be four top-rated shows this week that promote homosexuality on your TV in your house? There's a, there has been executive producer somewhere sitting in an office who decides which programs will be produced for the season. There's a guy sitting somewhere and he has a group that he discusses with. And don't tell me that in that whole group there's got to be an agenda. That's why we cannot sit here and say, well, we don't have the money, we don't have the investment to do this. Listen, if we don't do this, your kids' kids are in trouble. And they're pricing it right out of the church's market. Right out of the church's market. These waves are important. Waves contain the power to carry messages, and they are the power of mediation. Waves are dangerous. Matter of fact, let me show you how dangerous waves are. Whoever controls the air controls the waves. And whoever controls the waves controls what man hears and sees and, and understands, and therefore he controls the man. Whoever controls the waves controls the thoughts of the nation. Whoever controls the waves controls your future and your children. I want to challenge our young people who are going off to school. I want some of you all to go into the media. I'm talking about become playwriters and, and become movie producers. Go ahead and, and, and establish uh, 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 video music schools. I want you to develop stuff. We got to get in there. I'm talking about top class. We got to show the devil the fight is on, brother. Bring it on. And we need some wealthy saints who got millions to build our own production movie studios. I thank God for Matt Crouch, praise God. The Omega Code. He started up Hollywood. I was talking to him last week on the phone. I'm getting ready to do some other things. He wanted me to get involved in that. But I got so excited. I said, man, we finally got a guy who's thinking outside the box. Producing movies that are not trapped in religion, but they can go into the world and present a message of the kingdom that they cannot argue with quality about. Whoever controls the waves controls the minds of the people. The power of the air. The air is more powerful than the earth. Write that down, please. Say it with me. The air is more powerful than the earth. Say it together. The air is more powerful than the earth. Say it again. The air is more powerful than the earth. Now, I hope you write this down. This is what changed my mind about media. I thought the earth had power. The earth ain't got no power. The power is in the air around the earth. As a matter of fact, when Satan was cast out of heaven, listen to me carefully, he refused to live on earth. Some of you think that he lives on earth. The devil does not live on earth. Why? Earth doesn't have any power. When he was cast out of heaven, Satan decided to take up residence where the power was. He wanted to control the power, so he took up residence in the air. Stay with me. Because whoever controls the air controls the entire earth. 
You're getting it. He wants to rule the air. Well, ain't no power on earth. The power is in the air around the earth. And that is why the air controls the earth. Write this down, please, Ephesians 2. You don't believe me? Let's read it. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in the past in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. There it is in your Bible. He is the ruler of the air kingdom. The domain of the air is where the power is. And Satan refused to live on earth. Why? Ain't no power on earth. He became the prince of the power of the air. Let's talk about it. Ephesians 2, 14. It says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Everybody say power of the air. Say it again, power of the air. It didn't say <laughs> he's the prince of the air. The air got power. What is the power in the air? It's the waves. When you turn your television on, that is a transmitter being able to take the air and convert it into pictures. So someone's controlling the air. When you turn your radio on, it takes the transistor and makes the invisible waves audible. And you can hear them in music and in talk. When you listen to your CD, they are taking the air and turning it into visual sound or musical sound. And it's controlling you. It's all air. And that is why the media is a $10 trillion business. Why? The devil is making sure that that is financed properly. This church needs about $100,000 to equip itself for the media. They pay the guy who runs the camera in Hollywood that salary. That's what you're competing with. Terminator 2. Your kid leave church and go to that movie. Leave church and go to the movies. Two hundred million dollars on one movie to make it. And the church can't put the roof on. Are you listening to me? Now why would the devil make sure That 007 gets 14 million dollars just for signing his name. But your local pastor down the road can't get 1400 dollars to put a roof on the church. Because this is a wave war. It's a war of the waves. He's the prince of the power of the air. He rules the air. Our singing groups need to produce CDs. Let me just finish this. There's too much in my heart. It says, who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we also once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as others. In other words, all of that mess, it says this, because he is the prince of the power of the air, all the lust, all the corruption. He says, because he's ruling the airwaves, he is corrupting the whole nation, making the whole nation lustful. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you all something. You might not figure this out. This, I finally figured it out. Internet hit us five years ago. Guess what? Rapes in the Bahamas went up five years ago. Hey. Sodomy five years ago, went up. Homosexuality went up five years ago. Why? He's corrupting the whole nation with lust. Let me explain why. Don't, don't miss the last point. Let me explain why. Watch this. This is a verse that, that, that you, you, you just got to get this verse. What do we fight against? That's the question. What do we fight against? What are we fighting? It says in Ephesians 6, 
Put on the full armor of God. Now some of y'all get very spiritual and spooky about this, but this ain't spooky. This is very practical. He says, you're fighting against not flesh and blood. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God so you can stand against what? The schemes of the devil. Yeah. What's the schemes? His scheme ain't to make you go lie and cheat and all that stuff. He got a deeper scheme than that. Let's read the scheme, the next verse. It says here, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and against powers and against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness where? In the atmosphere. That's what your Bible says. He says, look, the fight is over waves. Now notice the fight's against what? Principalities. Let's deal with this before we go. The word principalities is actually the word that means precepts. It means principles. It means laws and ideas. Satan is the prince of the power of the air, and his job is to produce principalities through the wicked spirits in the atmosphere. His goal is to let you sit in your house, turn your radio, TV, internet, CD on, and to work on your mind, to create in your mind precepts and principles that are ungodly and they become laws by which you live. That's what the principle is. Guiding light. The young and the restless. Now, every day some of you got appointments with these things. Child, I got to get home on time. Why? I got to get my daily principle. And ain't nobody sleeping with their husband. And by the time you watch it for 10 years and your husband just does something strange, you start thinking, bang, download comes up and you start thinking he's like the guy you saw on Young and the Restless. And you start accusing the guy. It's a principle. And your first thought is, well, I'll just get a divorce. Why? That's the way they do it in the principles. We don't understand. It's about principalities. So they got these five gay men, they say, is it five now? Five gay men on TV dressing a straight guy. You all saw that? That's a show now. It's a big show now on cable. Five gay fellas, and the whole show is about them dressing up guys who ain't gay. And I'm sitting there thinking, what's the principle here? You know what the principle is. There's more of us, first of all, than y'all. That's number one. That's the first principle. There's plenty of us and less of y'all. That's the, that's the first principle. Second principle, we, we know more than y'all. We're smarter than y'all. Sissy make you smart. And number three, you should accept us because we can help you. And number four, we ain't bad after all. We ain't misfits, really. Yeah, but you are natural. You can't legislate what my rectum is, you, no matter what you do. But you see, it's the principle. And guess what? Guess who financing that show? You know who financing that show? The gay advertisers. For one minute, they pay $250,000 for 60 seconds to advertise. 30 seconds, which means that you got her plenty money. Do you sit back and let the prince of darkness rule the air? Or do we decide we're going to put our channel right next to theirs and they're going to be a battle for the air? Can I hear the church say amen? amen. Battle for the air. Here's my final thoughts on this. Our battle is a media battle. It's a battle for the mind. The strongholds are in the mind. Second Corinthians 10 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish what? Strongholds. Where these strongholds are? We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive what? Every what? thought to make it what? 
obedient to Christ. He says, our fight is over thoughts. The fight is for thoughts. Ideas. Ideas. We don't want to be shouting and dancing and shouting and screaming and our kids go into hell in a handbasket. We got to get in there and change the ideas. That's why we're on television every week. I know it costs a lot of money, but if we get off there, they can put another program on there, and they can be bumping and showing, shaking themselves up, and your kids say, see, you got to decide what's going to be seen and what's going to be heard. That's why I encourage these musicians, you all get busy. Write plenty of songs next year. I want you to get some program. Matter of fact, I, oh, God, have mercy. I put a license in for radio stations again. Hope they listen to me this time. Because we need to control as much air as we can. That's what we're fighting against. And we've got to bring those thoughts to what? The obedience of Christ. We've got to make the world hear what he says. Whoever controls the thought of a nation controls the nation. So what do we need? We need to get Logos in the word. It says, faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. John 6 says, the spirit gives life. The flesh comes for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are spirit. They give you what? Life. John 17, 18 says, I ate rather, says, for I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. Jesus speaking. I was the right media. He says, I gave them the word that you gave me. Whatever you gave me, I re related properly to them. I'm a, I, am, I am good media. So what do we got to do? Satan's goal is to control the waves so he control the minds. Satan's stronghold is the air. Any attempt to control the air is a direct attack on Satan's kingdom. Don't forget that. That's why we are in a fight. Satan is not afraid if you build a small church on the corner and put some glass stained windows to there and have a little good time. You know, that don't bother him. But if you ever decide to go on radio and produce records or to go on TV, some of you folks wondering, why is it so tough for me to, to produce a CD? You know, Brother Ken, you guys don't understand. Your pastor telling you why you're having trouble. This message is for you guys. You see, the reason why, listen, the visionaries had so much hell. Because we were fooling with the air, man. We began to attack the airwaves. Try to produce a CD. Every demon wakes up. Try to produce a movie. Oh, Lord, Prince and Principality, sure. Belzy Bob himself will come to you. When you start fooling with the air, you are attacking his very hometown. Why? He is what? The prince of the power of the air. He set up his strongholds in the air. That means his territory. His strong center is in the air. When you start touching the air, you are touching Satan himself. Jimmy Swigert. Boy, the devils, I'm going to get you off. Or Roberts, I'm going to get you off. Tell us, I'm going to get you off. The minute, they, the minute they go to the air, all kind of gossip, all kind of stuff. I mean, Satan goes, I got to get you off. That's why we got to pray for Paul Crouch. We got to pray for Jan Crouch. We got to pray. These people have done something that the devil is having a fit over. And whether you like them or not, you better pray. Because if they go off, what you going to hear? What you going to see? Matter of fact, think about the alternative. That's why we believe God is going to give us also our own television station to beam from the Bahamas all over the world. We're going to have to have control so we can decide what the people hear and what they see. Anybody with me say amen, man. Yeah. Romans 12, 2, your favorite scripture, right? Be not conformed, what? To this world, but be it transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. In other words, the whole point is to change the thinking back to the original. To teach the ways of God by the tape. We are commanded to occupy until he what? Comes. He said, don't wait around, wait to be lifted. He said, take over. Oh, Lord, let me go. I go I'm trying to go home, man. He said, look, don't just sit there and say, don't complain. Take over the place until I come. You ought to shout and praise God, clap loud. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me talk to you. You, you, you. You're my boy. Listen. Light it up. It's only the beginning. God warned you and all the brothers and sisters in here who got gifts like this in the media. He wants you to, listen, aim 
to take over, not the Christian station, all of them. We got to occupy airwaves and time on all of these stations. That's why I told the government in 1983, I told them, I don't want to go on no Sunday morning. I want Saturday night. Why? I want where the action is. I want to be where the minds need to be changed. You all better say before I go, man. We got, we got to, and Lord have mercy. Some of you got programs in your mind you need to produce educational programs you should be putting on 30 minutes come talk to us may we work it out we got to get stuff in the minds of these kids Amen. three o'clock when they come home garbage on zed nets we need some saints to start creating some programs to take the waves for our young people and our children they should be getting positive messages not all that junk they're getting I mean, BET is ruling the world. We just can't sit back. May God have mercy on our souls. Yeah? The church must take hold of the air and control the, the thought wave. We must clear the air for the final meeting. This is my final word right here. So I'm going to get to this. You know why the air is important? Here's the verse you never thought was in the Bible. Because we've got to clear the air. We've got to take the air back because there's going to be a meeting in the air. Christ is waiting until we control what Satan is controlling. The only way for us to meet in the air is we got to have space. So read that out loud. Read it out loud. Come on, read it. After that, we who are still alive, and I, we will be caught up together with them to meet him where? <laughs> we'll meet the Lord where? Where we can meet him? Therefore, encourage yourself with these things, he said. 